Hey guys, it's Jen. I wanted to jump on here and do a live in response to a lot of the questions I've been getting from my hormone blog post that I put out earlier this week. I talked about hormone imbalance and disruption, natural ways to heal your hormones holistically and effectively and safely. So a lot of the questions, or the biggest question I got was, do beauty products, chemicals, things cause hormone disruption? And we've probably heard that fact or that myth, or we've heard that said before. And in short answer, yes, they do. So let me um, tell you why. And then I'm gonna go through, I just pulled a bunch of products from my bathroom, my kitchen, um, the living room, and I'm gonna show you what I use to reduce my chemical exposure on my skin. So when these products that are not, well, these are more organic, but your natural, just like, or unnatural, conventional, your regular store bought products, a lot of them have chemicals that are not natural to the body. And the body knows that. And so when we're slathering them over our skin, we're breathing them in, we're ingesting them, we're putting them on our eyelids, we're brushing our teeth with them, our body knows that and it creates inflammation in the body to protect itself from that chemical getting into the cell or exposing itself to the body. So our body inflammation is actually, it's a really great tool to sh tell us that something is going on in the body, but it is a gift in, in telling us that something is in our body that our body doesn't like, whether that be a chemical, a pathogen, anything. So right now we're just gonna talk about chemicals, beauty products, and how they affect our hormones. And when you, if you have a chemical sensitivity, if you've been told that, or you know you react easily to scents, products, you have sensitive skin, that is oftentimes because your your cup is full, your, your body is already toxic. So you already have something, chemicals, pathogens, probably a myriad of them all in your body. And your bucket is, imagine yourself as a bucket and your bucket is filled to the brim with water. And when you add one more thing to say you walk in a room and there's a really strong Febreze um, air freshener plugged in and that just sends you over the edge, you get a headache, you feel lightheaded, you start to see little spots or maybe you start sneezing or your body aches or you're, you're having a reaction. That is because that was the tipping point for your body's chemical sensitivity. So to heal your chemical sensitivities, you have to heal the liver, you have to reduce your pathogenic load, reduce your toxin load, and let your liver heal. And that's done primarily through nutrition. But the biggest thing that you can do right now is you can begin to reduce your chemical load on your body. And that starts with what you're putting on your skin, what you're breathing in, what you're using in your home, because those are gonna be things that you're coming into contact with every day. So I'll take you through, just over the next couple of minutes, products that I use that have helped dramatically to reduce my chemical sensitivity. And my body is doing so much better. When I come into contact with a strong perfume, I don't wear perfume anymore, but it used to, if I'd get in the car with a girlfriend that had strong perfume on, it would send my body over the edge. I'd have to roll down the window, I'd get a headache, I'd start to feel really tired. And my body's improved a lot from that, from healing my chemical sensitivities. Also, I remember, and this was a big wake up call for me, before going out for a girl's night or whatever, you know, getting your hair done or doing your hair at home. So you wash it with the best shampoo and then you're putting the products in it, you're blow drying, you're teasing it, you're spraying it. And then you're putting on your makeup, starts with like, you know, a matte and then you're putting foundation powder, everything on your eyes, lipstick can be really toxic. You're putting that on. And then by the time I was ready to go out, I felt tired. I was like, oh my gosh, like maybe it's just late. It was, well, it was like 7.30, 8 o'clock, maybe late for me, but I was like, I shouldn't be tired. I felt so excited and ready to go out. And now that I'm all dolled up, I don't feel well while I was getting that chemical exposure and taking all those hits. So um, actually for you all, if you suggest any natural makeup brands, that's something that I'm exploring now. I don't wear a whole lot of makeup, but I'd love to see your suggestions in the comments below. So let's get started. So the first thing, we brush our teeth every day. I've been exploring different brands of toothpaste. I got this one from Amazon. Um, there's a lot of different brands, some available on Amazon, some you need to look on other websites, but do your research and start to look into fluoride-free toothpaste because fluoride can be very toxic to our brain. It can calcify our pineal gland. There's a lot of research if you dig into Google, Google Scholar, and look up what fluoride is, do fluoride is doing to our body. So get it out of your toothpaste. It's already in our drinking water. So this is just purified water from the fridge. There's 
tons of different water purification sources. Look them up, see what's the best fit for you, for your family, financially, and what you can do. And purified water will be one of your best bets. So secondly, what do I use? For those of you coming on, we're talking about chemical exposure and what products I use to reduce that in my daily load. So washing my hair, I've been playing around with shampoos. I've just been trying out different ones, natural shampoos, SLS, paraben free, DEA free, um, natural minded, vegan, usually not tested on animals, no synthetic fragrances. That helps me a lot. There's one thing that as I'm healing my chemical sensitivities, I will react to, it's a strong fragrance. Secondly, so our skin is our biggest organ. It's going to absorb everything we put on it. So I don't use lotion. I don't use like Bath & Body Works, Jergens. Those are all really wonderful products. And I know they smell great and they make great stocking stuffers for the holidays. But I actually will use something like before bed, if I'm just, if I'm not gonna be touching things and just getting into my own bed, I'll use something like shea butter. It can be oily on your hands. So if you're going out somewhere, getting ready to drive and you put this on your hands, you might get grease on your steering wheel or something. And then I will make my own um, body lotion. So I'll use like shea butter, essential oils, coconut oil, fractionated coconut oil, whatever uh, I'm making at the time. And I'll whip it up and I'll put it in like a Tupperware container. So that is one thing that's really important is Tupperware containers for your food and your products. So this has a plastic lid, but it doesn't really come in contact with that. And I'm not heating anything up in this, but your containers, your Tupperware for your foods or your products, they have endocrine disruptors and estrogenic properties that are going to cause inflammation in your body. So glass is best. I know it's more expensive. I know it's a risk for if you drop it, but it is really the best thing to be storing your products in. So secondly, this has coconut oil in it. It's a coconut oil based shaving cream that I've made. Shaving cream can be really toxic. It has a foaming agent that is not good to be putting on our skin and in our bodies if we're already sensitive to chemicals or we wanna reduce our toxin load. So I'll make a natural shaving cream and or you can just use coconut oil. You have to have a good drain and you want the water hot. So just make sure, I've been doing it for a long time and my drains have never had problems, but sometimes I'll put the drain trap in and I'll just catch it and then remove it before it even has a chance to go down. But this will just melt. If you're showering in warm water, it's gonna melt right away. It goes on your skin. The nice part is when you're shaving your legs, you don't have to like get away from the water or shut the water off. You can actually just put this on your skin for shaving and the water can run over it and you still have that face and that protectant. And um, second, so what do I use on my face? I don't actually use face wash anymore and that's been a long line of thought. And it started with me looking around at the skin of my friends who had the best skin. It was all my guy friends. And I'm like, they don't spend any money on this expensive face product. And there are some natural products I really do like, but for ease, I do a lot of hot yoga. I'm sweating all the time. So my skin is purifying. And then I do rinse off my face with water, of course, and in the shower. But if I'm going to do a treatment on my face, I use this uh, Fuller's Clay Earth Mask and I store it in a mason jar and then I just mix it with water and I put it on a couple times a week. And then for moisturizer, I use vitamin E oil. I get a lot of these products, like these two from mountainroseherbs.com. I love, love that website. I've ordered from them from a long time. And vitamin E oil, you can put it on cut, scrapes, scars, but it is really good for your face and it heals any blemishes um, or anything you have going on. If I eat a bunch of bad food, I'm gonna break out and I'll put this vitamin E oil on it after a mask and it's gone. So it is incredibly healing. It's really good for your skin. You can ingest it so you know it's safe to put on your skin. That's my rule of thumb. Coconut oil, shea butter, vitamin E, you can ingest all of those things. In fact, my dogs love to steal this off of the counter and eat the whole jar. It doesn't do anything to them. They just like it. Same with the coconut oil. So they're safe to put on your skin. And especially if you have kids or babies that you're worried about, what am I putting on their skin? That might be something to consider as well. Body wash, I make my own and I just put it in little bottles or whatever I have on hand. Sometimes I'll use Castile soap and fractionated coconut oil, honey, essential oils. It's a mixture. And sometimes I'll just try out different things. What did, I'm trying to think what I put in this one. I think this is essential oils and a natural soap and then fractionated coconut oil. And I love it. It works really, really well. The hard thing is when we're used to the body washes that foam 
and spread really nice. That'll be different when you're using a natural product. They won't have that bubbly, that foam, and that's actually part of the chemical and the toxic agent in the product. So you'll just have to get used to not having the bubbles or the bubble bath, and that's totally fine with me. So the last couple of things, I love essential oils. I use these roller oils for a bunch of different things. Sometimes I'll just use them as deodorant because we all know how toxic deodorant can be, especially in aluminum brands. Ladies, let's not be putting aluminum under our armpits. That gets in our lymph system. That increases our breast cancer risk tenfold. It's really an important topic. So if this is the first time you're hearing that information and you want to know more about what deodorant you're using, just Google it. Just do the research. Switch out your deodorants. They're super easy. That's probably the, one of the number one things you can do is switching out your deodorant. And then if I'm just home and I'm not, I don't, I mean, once you're clean and your body's not toxic, you, you won't stink and you don't need deodorant. It's great to wear it because <laughs> it's kind of a social thing. Like just in case you're out and you get stinky, you definitely want deodorant. But a lot of times I'll just use my rollers. So this is like a Magnolia from doTERRA. doTERRA is my favorite. Um, and I like Jasmine this one for and these work as perfumes too and hope so i'm really sensitive to perfumes and if i wear them it, there's a chance it's going to flare me up and i don't want to do that so i just use my essential oil rollers melaleuca i like this one it's tea tree i put it on cuts blemishes anything instead of slapping on antibiotic ointment or just any over-the-counter medication on my skin i use tea tree oil and it always works or lavender lavender is a really good one too for itches and scrapes and cuts and then this clary calm it's clary sage and lavender ladies it's great for um, cramps around your cycle you can put it in a clockwise motion over your abdomen and that will help you as well and it smells good every time i'm wearing it people are like oh what is your perfume and i'm like it's my essential oils so and then these ones in the bottles i'm going to touch on cleaning products and then we're going to wrap up but i like to use so what you're diffusing in your home if you have artificial plug-in air fresheners i say this with grace rip those suckers out of the wall they are causing inflammation and harm to your body I used to love them. I used to put like two in each room because they smell so good and we want our homes to smell good and feel clean and feel fresh. But you can do the same thing with essential oils for you know about the same price as you think you're buying all those. Um, but these bottles do last a long time. So ones I like to diffuse, Elevation. It's like a, that fruity, fresh, if you're buying that Hawaiian breeze or you know the plugins, you like that, you'd like Elevation. It smells so good and it really does uplift your mood. And I, I don't sell essential oils, well I do, but I'm not a doTERRA or that's not my focus. So this isn't a salesy thing, I'm just telling you what can help you for your home. And then On Guard, it smells like fall, so all the you know nutmeg, cinnamon, clove, that's all in here, wild orange. It smells, people think it's just a fall plug-in that I have, but it's On Guard and it's great for warding off colds and flus. Like if you're sick, you put this on your feet and it works like a charm. And you can also diffuse it in your home. And then I use lavender in my room when I'm going to bed, lavender for everything. That's how I scent my products, that my shaving creams, my you know, bath and body work stuff, whatever. That's what I make the scent with. And then cleaning products, I clean with lemon a lot. So this is my go-to spray if I'm cleaning off like my juicer or my counters. It's a little bit of white vinegar, some water, and then lemon or like a purify essential oil and it really does get the gunk off and I just use a scrubber and it reduces the chemicals because you think you're cleaning your counters and then with you know like a Lysol and then you're putting your food on it and then you're eating it that's really toxic and those breathing and cleaning chemicals can be really toxic I mean they are really toxic you might not feel a sensitivity to them but take my word for it they're not serving your liver or your whole body they will create inflammation so swap them out it's a super easy trade you don't have to throw all your products away but before you go buy new ones just consider Consider what you want to replace them with seventh generation soap I'll use this in hand soap dispensers with essential oils it's what I wash my fruits and vegetables with I've definitely eaten it and it's not it is okay to wash your fruits and vegetables with I know I haven't rinsed it all off before and I've bitten into an apple and it's been fine it doesn't have a soapy taste but it's a really good product I will use this in some of my bubble baths and things that I make and it works as well and then it, I want to say about this spray, the everyday spray that I talked about, there's just water, white vinegar, and oils. It doesn't clean glass well, so I do buy a glass cleaner that works at Thrive Market, Amazon, Whole Foods. You can get these products. Just look, do your research, find out no parabens, SLS, um, DEA. Just look at the labels. There's not 
too many perfect products, but we can definitely reduce our exposure just by choosing cleaner products. So, so these are the things that I use. Ladies, if you are interested in how I make these, the face mask, the shaving cream, the lotions, the moisturizers, the body wash, all of that, January 24th, it's a Friday night. We're gonna have a women's wellness workshop, ladies edition. That's gonna be some of what we cover. There's gonna be a chance for you to sample everything, a chance for you to take some of these home. We're gonna make essential oil rollers for different needs for, you know, just feeling like stress away. We're gonna do cycle, monthly cycle of relief. These essential oils can bail you out when you don't have anything on you, but you're a little roller. And then we can talk about more of the women's health um, products, chemicals, just food, anything. So that's November, or not November, January 24th. So two months away, put it in your calendar, be a Friday night, and I'll have more information on my blog. And if you didn't get a chance to read the hormone blog post that I'm talking about, go to my blog, middaypigeon.com, and there will be a little pop-up, subscribe to my blog, so your email's in there, you'll get updates on all these videos, these blog posts I send out on the events, and I will keep you posted from there. And if you liked this, be sure to like, the video, share it with your friends, and then comment on any questions that you have. And also let me know, ladies, what natural makeup products you're finding that you like. So.